Good morning, I'm Pastor Sanders, the voice of the Christian resistance, coming to you from Doers of the Word Baptist Church at 9975 Kinsman Road in Novelty, Ohio. And our zip code, if you'd like to write, is 44072. You're listening to us this morning on the Liberty Works Radio Network. That is the Eagle 104.3 in Tampa and Ocala. The title of the message this morning is The Repair of the Breach. The Repairers. The Repairers of the Breach. And today in America we see our once great nation. In fact, it was the greatest nation uh, ever known by man. And we see America imploding today from within right before our very eyes. Our Creator, in His divine wisdom, gave the Founding Fathers of America the insight to form a government whose foundation was laid upon the inerrant, irrefutable Word of God. Now these men paid a heavy price for their devotion to God and to their families and to each other. They knew that their blood, sweat, and tears, along with many of their lives, would be only a, a down payment for their freedom, liberty, and rights, inalienable rights that come from God. They warned of the eternal vigilance that would be necessary to keep freedom free. And while America was faithful and true to defend its liberties along with the freedoms of our allies, she failed to defend against the enemy from within. Amen. The evil enemy that we face today has many faces and many names. In times past, it has been called Mystery Babylon, Religion, and Humanism, along with Progressive Socialism and Communism. Although the names keep changing, the Antichrist world system stays the same. The war is being fought over the souls of men. And the battlefield is the divine institutions of marriage and the family. The goal of Satan is to conquer and destroy both. So, let us build our defenses on the Word of God. And turn in your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 58. Now in Isaiah chapter 58 we're going to see a few things. First of all, you're going to see that God is unimpressed uh, with their fast, because they're doing it to impress each other. God wants their obedience. God makes promises uh, to the people that will be kept only when His conditions have fulfilled, have been fulfilled, and the promises realized. And we start in verse 1. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgressions, and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to, to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask for me in ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. Wherefore we fasted, say they, and thou seest not. Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge. Behold, in the day of your fast you find pleasure and exact all of your labors. He's telling them very clearly, look, your fastings, I'm not very pleased with your fasting. The reason you're fasting is not for me, not for God. They're fasting to impress each other. And oh, they impressed God all right, okay, but not in the way that they wanted to. You see, God looks upon the hearts of men. And folks, uh, you cannot, you <coughs> cannot deceive God. God's not mocked. And we continue to, to teach on that over and over. You know, it's an amazing thing. We, we, God demands sacrifices. Did you know that God gives you over 3,800 promises in the Bible? But you know what? Those promises come with the fact that to receive that, you have to be in compliance. And He demands obedience. You see, we live in a world out there today that is has gotten so far away from the teachings of the Word of God. They don't understand. They don't understand what, what keeping the Sabbath is. To most people today, 
Sunday is a good day to get a rest. It's a, it's a non-work day. You don't, it's a day you don't have to work. That's not what it is to God. You see, again, you know, the emphasis is, listen, unless you learn to put God first in everything, and I mean everything, don't expect God to put you first in anything. He goes on to say, Behold, you fast for strife and debate and to smite with a fist of wickedness. You shall not fast as you do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? It, is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let oppressed go free, and to break every yoke. He's telling you when I want you to fast. I want you to fast in repentance. I want you to do as he said here. Loose the bands of wickedness. To repent. To repent of your wicked ways. Is it not to deal the bread to the hungry? And thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house. When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. Now, in this next two verses, he makes five promises here. Listen to what he says. Then shall thy light break forth. You see, he's telling them, right now you're in darkness. But if you repent in this fast, then you'll see the light. In other words, you'll have an understanding. Well, that's the problem we have today, folks. The world out there is in la-la land. They're clueless. They're absolutely clueless out there today. Today in pulpits all over this country, not only all over this country, there are people that are in these pulpits. They're hearing messages from people that are not called or sent by God. Right. And, and there are many today in these so-called churches that won't hurt hear one single word from the Bible. Amen. Not one word. They'll hear these philosophical, melodious little sermonettes, but not one word from the Bible. Mm -hmm. It'll be on positive thinking. Oh. And and you know what? That's where it attracts the largest crowds. People, they want to come to these stadiums with these so-called mega churches. Why? They can hide in there. They can find a comfortable place and be sure that nobody's going to call on them to do anything but dump some money in that offering plate. You see those preachers with the itching ears too, who wanted to know what people want to hear. Oh, they found out. And they're going to, they're going to provide that. Not what they need to hear, but what they want to hear. And that's the problem today. Most people are going to be hearing what they want to hear, what they're literally paying to hear. You see, that's what Israel did. They told Jeremiah, look, you are not what we want. We've got other prophets out here that are telling us what we want to hear. Don't you understand who we are? We're God's people. We're special. Amen. God's going to do things to us, or for us, right? Amen. Well, you see... God will <clears throat> to his people. And what God does, he tells his people what they need to hear. What God gives his people are not the material things that, that are going to burn and rust out. Okay, But this is what he says here. Then thy light will break forth in the morning. Then you'll have an understanding. He goes on to say, And thine health shall spring forth speedily. He's talking about the health of a nation or the health of a people. Well, I'm going to tell you, what is called the church in America is sick today, folks. Yep. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Our nation is sick today. Amen. The judicial system is imploding today. Yes. He said, and the health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. You know, your righteousness is what the world takes a look at. Your righteousness, 
the response that the world shall have to your righteousness is anger. You see. But that's what God's word, the Bible said it would be like, didn't it? Okay? Yeah, that's right. The Bible said, if you abide in Christ and Christ abides in you, this is what I keep telling people because <coughs> the world keeps telling you over and over again, you're the problem. You're the problem. You think you're better than everybody else. You shouldn't be so judgmental. You should accept the way things the way they are. See, you're the problem because you people are separatists. You're narrow-minded, and that's what you are. Guess what? The Bible says we are to be narrow-minded. We are to be focused upon the Word of God. That's right. So when they say that, I plead guilty. Absolutely. But my mind is on the right thing. Your mind's all over the place. Right? Right. And I don't want any of what's in it because it, it'll get you dirty. He says this, And thy righteousness shall go before thee, the glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. The glory of the Lord, listen, that is a reward, a reward that money cannot buy. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer, thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am, if thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, and the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity. Do you know what he was talking about? The, put, the pointing forth of the finger is pointing the finger. The custom in the Middle East in those days, if you pointed the finger at somebody, it was the same as cursing them. You see. And today, of course, what they say, they say, remember, any time that you point the finger at somebody, you got four other ones pointing back at you, see. That's the idea. But remember, the Bible says when we judge, we judge with righteous judgment. It does not say we're not to judge. It says that we're to judge with righteous judgment. And he says this, in fact, it says we're to judge everything. Everything. Amen. And if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall the light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness is a noonday. And the Lord shall guide thee continually, and satisfy thy soul up in drought, and make fat thy bones, and thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach. And the restore of the past to dwell in. Well, going back to verse 10, if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry. He's talking about uh, the present state of calamity and distress will be replaced by God's sunshine, by the light of God's word. He's telling you there, here, uh, in verse 11, And the Lord shall guide thee continually, and satisfy thy soul in drought. And make fat thy bones, and shall be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. Uh, a spring of water will be the outgoing godly influence of a believer who shares his blessings with others. That's what he's referring to. But here now, in verse 12, he says this, And they that shall be of the of thee shall build the old waste places, thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach and the restorer of the past to dwell in. Well, that was accomplished in Israel when God raised up and they went back to the Lord. But now, this applies to America today. You know, we can do it by restoring the institutions and reclaiming the institutions of marriage and the family, folks. We can repair the breaches. And that's what we've got to do. And one of the ways we're going to do that is what we're going to see here is learning how to stand alone. You see, each and every one of you has to learn how to stand alone. As we continue, he says this, if thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing the pleasure in my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, 
the Holy of the Lord, honorable, shall honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. Then shall thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places, the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Well, the Sabbath is meant to show a sincere love for the Lord, a day set aside to worship Him. It's about God, not about getting a day off of work. You see, so many people think, well, ah, uh, Sunday's here, it's picnic time. Or Sunday's here, we can go out swimming, it's summertime, okay? Or, you know, this or that. Or going to one of them old dumb rock concerts, okay? That's what people think, but that's not what the Bible says, okay? The Bible says Sunday should be set aside to worship God. How many believe that? Okay. And folks, you better believe it. You see, that's what God's giving you. God demands obedience. More than anything else in the Word right here, He demands obedience. Amen. i got to tell you something, folks, and this is for real as can be. What God says is going to become. God always does what He says He'll do. That's right. Amen. He's long-suffering, and what does He say? He puts you apart at a little space. He gives you a little space. It means He gives you time to get in compliance. He gives you time to learn Grace. how to be obedient. He gives you time to learn to put Him before Grace. everything else. See, God never wants second place in anything. Amen. Not in anything. Okay? And you see, God doesn't deserve second place in anything. He deserves first place in everything. Amen. You see, nobody, and I mean nobody, and I mean nobody, has done as much for you as God has. Amen. Amen. Well, how do you stand alone? A good way to find out it by turning over to Second Peter. In Second Peter. We want to remember that as we look through this, and we start in verse three in Second Peter, <coughs> chapter one. Second Peter, chapter one, verse three. According as His divine power hath given it to us all things pertaining to life and and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. I told you before, over 3,800 promises in this Bible here. 3,800 promises. But they come with conditions. That by these you might be partakers of a of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you, and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind. Now listen to me. Listen to what it says here. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure for if you do these things, you shall never fail. You should never fall. You should never fail. But your election and your calling are not contention on human effort, folks. Listen, nobody in here... How many times have you heard people say, I found the Lord? <laughs> folks, God was never lost. <laughs> nobody ever found God. The Bible says, no one seeketh after God. No, not one! Okay? God found you. That was the job of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit does one or two things. He'll either convict a sinner to repentance, or that sinner will rebel. 
he'll go the other way, one way or the other. God allows you the choice. God's not a dictator where he forces things upon people. He gives you the opportunity. Here, here's what my son did. Here's the sacrifice. He made it for you. Receive it or reject it. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that's right. That's reality. Right. That's what happens, see. Now, here, he's telling you, again, like he says, God called you. The Holy Spirit turned you towards him. And then he gave you that opportunity to receive him. And you did that, you see. But your election was not anything that was initiated by you. But now that you have them, you are obligated, since you received that <coughs> gift, to make the most of it in every way that you can. You understand? Again, we are obligated... If you, if you try to remember this all day long, it'll help you through the life in every way. Okay. God has expectations of us, of every one of us. We have obligations to Him. God owes us nothing. God owes, he owes us nothing. We owe Him everything. Amen. That's right. Amen. We owe Him everything. Okay? Some people say, well, I didn't ask to be brought into this world. Yeah. Listen, you're here. You better understand something. You're the clay. He's the potter. You're here. You better make the best of it. Amen. Because you'll either make the best of it or you wish you had. Those are the options, right? Amen. Now, I want you to go over to Proverbs 22. And in Proverbs 22, there's a number of verses I want to read here. But the first one is this, number 3, verse 3. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. Let me read that again. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. He's telling you that you need to try and foresee what might lie ahead regarding the behavior and the actions of those around us so that you can be ready with a, a right answer. Amen. In other words, folks, you, you know by being around certain people, we are to have a better perception and enlightenment than the world has out there. Right. You see... <coughs> So we know that being around certain people certain times, sooner or later, they're going to make a certain statement. They're going to say something or they're going to do something that you expect them to do. And instead of waiting for that time to come and then give an answer, be prepared. Think of yourself and in your mind. Just imagine that individual saying these things. Uh, people will always say to me, I wished I was as, as quick as you. You always have an answer out there when you're preaching. Well, you know what? That's exactly what I did. I listened to this verse right here. I, I perceived that somebody was going to say this to me or do a certain thing. So I was prepared to, to answer them. And that's what he's telling you. See, this is the wisdom of the Word of God. Right. Amen. Amen. If you go to verse 6, it says this, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will never depart from it. Train up a child in the way he should go. What is it? Verse 6, right there. Mm -hmm. What does it say? 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 10. It tells you that uh, <coughs> through, 12, through 15 that the greatest ministry, the greatest ministry that a woman can have is to, to be obedient to God, to be a great wife, and to raise her children in the ammunition of the Lord. Amen. Now, here, he says, if you train up a child in the way he should go. He said, well, I don't know. What's the way he should go? Well, just watch television or listen to what they teach in the public school and do exactly the opposite. Amen. 
<laughs> do exactly the opposite because Amen. Yeah, that's right. the folks, that is not the way they should go. Amen. Right. right here, the Word of God teaches you very clearly. He tells you in, in verse 11, He that loveth pureness of heart, for the grace of his lips, the king shall be his friend. Now listen. He that loveth pureness of heart, for the grace of his lips, the king shall be his friend, folks. We recognize one king. We only recognize one king. We only recognize one authority. That authority is of God. Romans chapter 1. There is no authority but that of God. We recognize one king. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords, right? Amen. And he's telling you here that he that loveth pureness of heart. What is pureness of heart? He's talking about this. It's the word of God right here. The teachings, you see. How many of you want the King of Kings to be your friend? Yes. Boy, he tells Absolutely. you in Psalm chapter 2. Yes. Kiss the king, kiss the son. <laughs> because if he's just a little bit angry at you, you're in a world of hurt. Amen. Jesus said, don't, don't worry about the men that can kill your body. That body's going to die anyhow. Everybody in here better plan on dying because it's coming your way. Amen. Right? Yes, sir. If you think you're going to miss it, well, you got another thing coming. <laughs> you say, what about the rapture? Even at the rapture, you die. That's what that changing is. You die to the world. You, d you die with the old body. And you have a new, right? Yeah. So you don't escape death. It's going to get you. Death is going to get you. But through Christ, we have eternal life. Amen. Amen. That's right. And that gets rid of the curse of death. But he's telling you here... <coughs> Now he says, foolishness, verse 15, foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. That is why the world is so far from disciplining children. That's why the world hates what they call corporal punishment today. When I grew up, it was mandatory in a public school system. You had corporal punishment. Amen. I met up with corporal punishment on a regular basis when I was a kid. I knew all about that corporal punishment. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And I'll tell you, probably it was a good thing that, that I did. And I know I can tell by looking at the faces of some of you guys out there that you met with that too. You know, today they... They wanted to know, you know, they try to blend everything. They're, they're trying to take away uh, everything from black and white. They want to make it brown. And everything's got to be out there now. And in California, uh, they're passing legislation just to have what they call same-sex bathrooms, where they just have one bathroom for the boys and the girls, you know. And I remember when... We were in, I was in school, and uh, some of us boys, you know, got on the, the hard side of that paddle. We always had the question, why don't the girls ever get it? Why don't you paddle the girls like you do the boys? And the explanation was that uh, they would take a triangle and say, you see, this is how girls are made, and then they would turn it upside down, and that's how boys were made. You know, in other words, you know, boys are like this, and girls are made the opposite way that way. And we were supposed to understand what that meant. <laughs> I don't think they knew what it meant, but anyhow. <laughs> but we understood there was a difference between girls and boys, and, and we treated the women different. We had something we called common sense. Oh, yes. That's right. Today, now, I know that's illegal. Today, come, common sense will probably get you arrested. If you tell a cop out there in the street, I've got common sense, well, more than likely you'll be arrested as a terrorist. <laughs> but when, when must we stand alone? Turn over in your Bibles to, well, I got, wait, I got one more here, Proverbs 21. Proverbs 21, verse 19. It is better to dwell in the wilderness with a contentious, to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and an angry woman. I'm just going to leave that one go. <laughs> it's 
see? That's what you talk about discernment, godly discernment. <laughs> but if we go over to 1 Thessalonians, in chapter 5 of 1 Thessalonians, in verses 12 through 22, we read these. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you, and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for the work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient to, toward all men, see that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among you and to all men. Now, well, let's, see, that's one of the the areas Christians really have to work. If you get thrown into battle, you see, when we go to New York up there, and that is, you do not, you do not reduce yourself to the actions of the world. That's you right. don't respond to the world the way the world responds to you. And boy, you'll learn that on the streets out there very quickly yeah, when right. you get out there. You all have a tendency... Uh, to boy, just want to get even, you know, right. just to 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 want to fix these wicked people. Well, there's ways of doing it, but you know what? The Bible says, "Vengeance is whose, and who's mine, <coughs> belongs to the Lord." Amen. Yeah. And you don't respond to these people the way they respond to you when they come out to you when you're on the street. You out there, first of all, God's word, the Bible says that who needs a physician? The well or the sick? The sick need the physician, right? The Bible says that we are to preach the salvation message to A, the lost, or B, the saved. The lost. The lost, that's right. So in order to do that, you go to where the lost are, right? That's right. Today you've got this mindset. Uh, these prissy preachers, they find a comfortable pulpit they want to hold up. And tell people, if you want to get saved, come on in here. Listen, believe me, most of the lost don't want to get saved. That's right. They'll say, what are you, an idiot? Okay. We're not going to go in there where there's Bible thumping. We, we want to hear the Word of God. We don't want to hear the Word of God. That's right. That's why we take the Word of God out to them. You Amen. See? That's right. Amen. Yeah, we actually do that. We take the salvation message to the lost. We take it right to the gates of hell. Yes, we do. When we go out there to plan predators which is known as Planned Parenthood to the world, virtually everybody coming in there needs, needs to hear the message. Everybody coming in needs to hear the message. And folks, guess what? We have people that, that hear the message and repent of their sin and receive Christ as their Savior. Amen? Amen. And, and i, I got to tell you, see, look, you, you have all this legislation that's been passed, out there today, and you hear all the hoopla. I'm going to tell you who's mostly responsible for closing these abortion mills down. In 1990, there was about 2,700 abortion mills in this country. Now there's 625. Oh, praise God. the Lord. Praise you Lord. understand? And I can tell you, it wasn't from the legislation, it was from people going out there. That's right. Yeah. People going out and gathering the evidence and bringing attention. When you are to be Salt and light. Salt does two things, remember? It preserves. What are you preserving? This. Do you understand? This. The teachings that you get from here on marriage, on the family, and on your faith. You see? You preserve this. This is what salt means. What does salt also do? Well, God's word is a two-edged sword. It cuts both ways. <coughs> And you bring that out there, it cuts both ways. Now, the police out there at the abortion mill, and you fellas that come out there, no. They'll always go to the opposite end of wherever I'm at. Yeah. Right. Wherever I'm at, and I'm, I'm thinking of just standing in the middle and see what they do. Okay. <laughs> Why? They're not afraid of me. That's it's right. that. That's right. 
Because these cops that have come out and they've, they've said to me, well, you know, we have laws in this country. I know all about those laws. I teach biblical law. And, and they just open a door for me, and I just give them what the Word of God has to say. Well, let me just go ahead and finish here. He says this, Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the feeble-minded. Yeah, boy, do we have a lot of those today. Mm -hmm. Support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good. What is good? What is good? The Bible clearly de describes itself doctrine and obedience to God. Doctrine, the Word of God, and obedience to God is good. Uh, see that, uh, okay, and he goes on, Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying. Here you go. Here you go. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Amen. Prove all things. This is what it means. And abstain from the appearance of evil. That means that you need to stand. If you're the only one, the only one, if you're surrounded by 10,000 and all of them are pointing a finger to you, okay, be like Joshua. Joshua said, this day, for me and my family, we will follow God. For me and my house, we'll follow God. Paul said, if I'm the only one, if I'm the only one. That's right. And that's what you have to be. Okay? You say, let me tell you what. If you're surrounded by 10,000 and all of those 10,000 are cursing you for taking your stand, well, the day will come when God will remember that. And today, history recalls people that took a st stand and stood alone. Amen? Amen. And that's what you want to be. You want to be the, the stand fast. Remember this. Lord Jesus said, If you deny me before man, so shall I deny you. Before the Father and the angels in heaven. Amen. You don't want that. Amen? Amen. You start every day. Before you get out of bed in the morning, listen to me. Pray to God, ask God to use you to the fullness that day. And the last thing you do at night, you ought to be praying as you fall asleep. God always, God always honors commitment, every commitment you make to Him. Amen? Amen? And we need to honor our commitments. Amen. We've been coming to you, I know it's kind of overtime, but we've been coming to you from Doers of the Word Baptist Church at 9975 Kinsman Road in Novelty, Ohio. If you'd like to call us, our phone number is 440-564-1319. You've been listening to us on Liberty Works Radio. That's the Eagle 104.3 in Tampa, in Ocala. And until next week, we want to say good morning, God bless. Remember, always, always, keep fighting the fight. You still have six minutes. You just held up a sign that said, one minute. You did, I saw it. Oh, oh, yeah. well, I'm sorry, I have it backwards. Damn it. Oh, <laughs> work. Uh, I got a senior moment. Oh. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all right. We're singing crazy. Play, play a song. The radio will get the song. Get the, uh, the radio will get the Well, we're going to play the song. The radio will get the song this morning. Hey, yeah. Uh, hey, I thought that, that, I, that this message was, was ending a little fast. You folks out there listening to us this morning, I just got to, I am I, I, the victim of a absent my <laughs> of an old fella. But anyhow, listen to this because we're about to sing you a song to come from Doers of the Word. 133 in the All American. Listen, folks, you got to sing loud because they're listening to this in Florida. 133 in the All American. Remember who we're singing to? Yeah. But remember who we're singing for. That's more important. What was it, Jess? 133. I pinched my tent and you. Oh, wait. Mistake. Mulligan, 109. 109. Mulligan. Mulligan. All right. I think he knew about it. 133 in the 
other book, it's 109 in this book. <laughs> yeah, you don't need all the details. Okay. Rock of Ages. Rock of Ages.